So anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, lamb and kid survival. Um, and we're basically just going to be talking mainly about during the birthing process and a few days after. Um, and, and you'll kind of see the reason I did that as we go through this talk, I think. Um, just a little disclaimer, um, you know, the information I'm given is coming from sheep and goat peer reviewed articles. There was a significant finding in that article is why I'm using it. That means that there's less than a 5% chance that what that article told us just happened to be an accident, accidental finding. Okay. So there is some significance to it. One of the issues that we have with goats is there's not a lot of peer reviewed articles out there. So sorry about that, but <laughs> that's just the way it is. And then the other thing is most of the studies on sheep and goats do not come from the United States. So unfortunately, we have to kind of extrapolate and that doesn't always work because conditions are different in other countries, um, but it's the best we can do. So we'll get started here. So lamb and kidding season. Um, this just comes from our National Animal Health Monitoring System that the United States Department of Agriculture and the Animal Plant and Health Inspection Service do periodically. Uh, this is a 2011 sheep study. Um, I just want to put it up here to indicate the time of the year when most of the lambs are born in the United States. And you can see the graph as well as me. Uh, Basically, from February through May is when most of them are born. You see a little bit of an increase there in uh, October, November, and December, but by far and large, most lambs are born in the spring. Kidding season, a similar pattern. Uh, you, this comes from the 2009 uh, goat study, um, and you can see they start in December and they peak there in March and go down from there. So most of the lambs and kids born in the United States are in the spring. What causes the death? The majority of deaths uh, from birth um, occur because of either dystocia, a weather-related problem, or starvation in, in, in lambs. And this comes from our 2020, uh, another National Health Monitoring System study and the death loss. And you can see these three things count for a little over 80,000 deaths when it comes to, comes to lambs. Uh, similar in kids, this comes from the 2009, uh, no, 2015 study. If you look at those bottom three boxes there, whether were they starvation and kidding, uh, we're talking, I think, about, no, oh, what is that, 54, 55,000 dead kids. And, and when we look at studies on goats, uh, you're looking at starvation and weather-related deaths play a significant role. Uh, these are a couple of studies that came from one from New Zealand, one from India on goats. So just give you that to give you a basis for uh, kids and the cause of death in them. And, and the reason we're going to fo function on, on the birthing process in those first few days after, after the birth. Uh, gestation. You know, Lamb, and see, I misspelled something there. I'm sorry. Lambs and kid, they 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 live in this luxury apartment. Okay, that's what they're in. If as long as the ewe and the doe is fed properly, uh, this is temperature controlled. They get all the nutrients they need. They've got a smorgasbord, etc. And then, unfortunately, one day they get an eviction notice. Okay. Their whole world changes in just a matter of a short period of time. And it can be complicated. The eviction process can be complicated. You know, we're looking at about 50% of those lambs are going to die because of a problem during that birthing process. Uh, we know that if they've got a brother uh, or sister with them, that they, that's, you're going to see more trouble with that. More of them are going to die in rams. And if they've got more than one brother or sister, really can be a problem. And we also know that the way that you acts or, or, or doe acts can have a dramatic in, uh, impact on, on death rates in those lambs and kids. So, so here are some factors as far as the social concern. Uh, you have maternal and fetal. That means one's caused by the mom. The other one's caused by the lamb or kid. Um, the biggest problem we have is that fetal pelvic disproportion. And that's just saying the lamb or kid is 
bigger than the pelvis is allowing to move through. And that's probably our number one issue as far as maternal dystocia. The rest of those uh, usually have something to do with the cervix not getting dilated fully, whether it's uh, ring womb or you've got a vaginal prolapse, uterine torsions are very unusual in sheep and goats, uh, inguinal hernias. These would be unusual things. Of course, uterine inertia, um, this is usually can be caused by diseases like hypercalcemia or pregnancy toxemia. Uh, stress plays a, a role in that as well. Uh, you know, use or dose that get stressed, they may, the uterus may just stop. And then you have exhaustion. So uh, when we look at the fetal dystocia, we're talking about malpresentation, about 50% of those are going to account for that. It means that, that the fetus is not in the proper either presentation, position, or posture. You know, something's wrong. Uh, and, and that's what we'll see there. You know, falling birth, that baby loses heat rapidly. Um, and I don't care if it's 100 degrees outside. The moment it's born, its temperature is going to drop. And depending upon what, the, what it is out there, you can see some substantial drops in temperatures. And during that time, this animal has to rise. He's got to get up, stand, locate a tea, and get him a meal before his energy reserves are depleted. We know that brown fat provides the major source of that energy, um, it, and it's just a small percentage of that body weight. So just thinking about that, the smaller you are, the less you have to, to use. Uh, we also know that, that use in poor condition are going to produce lambs that have less of the brown fat. We know that weather conditions play a pretty important role um, in lamb deaths, whether that be wind, we know wind, moisture, cold, all play a significant role in, in those lambs surviving. One of the reasons that we, we talked about that brown fat is less in those newborns. And one of the issues you find out if you've got a weather related problem, that heat loss, is higher in small lambs or, or kids. It's just, it's a, and so they get a higher loss and they don't have the energy reserves to, to compensate for that. So that's why it's really important that those lambs get nourishment as quickly as possible. Boston, the second reason that babies die because they don't get colostrum. Uh, we know that twins, that it's more of a problem. We also know that colostrum starts out high as soon as the animal is born and then it decreases rapidly to there hardly any of it is absorbed in 24 hours. So that's why it's so important that they get it as soon as possible so that it gets absorbed and they can take advantage of those, uh, all the different quali qualities of that um, colostrum that it gives to the animal. We got a question, what is brown fat? It's, it's just a fat that they're born with and it's brown. That's why it's called brown. And you have white fat, which we would typically think about. Okay. But newborns have this brown fat. It's higher in energy compared to the other fats in the body. And that's why it's so important. But, but newborns are born with it. It's very small quantity, quality, as you saw, two to 4% or so. But it's, it's, the, it's the color of it that's why they call it that. And it is something that newborns have compared to us. Okay. I hope that answers the question. I don't know how else to answer that question. <laughs> um, birth weight. Uh, we know that lamb birth weight is associated with death. You know, big lambs and very small lambs are, are going to have a higher death rate compared to those in the inter intermediate range. Uh, most things that I see, uh, studies are going to tell you that a half to one kilogram above what would be the average body weight of your flock or herd is what you would like to see. Those are going to be the lambs that do the best or kids that do the best. Uh, obviously, triplets are going to have low birth rates. Um, you lambs are usually lighter than ram lambs. And, and of course, your first time two-year-old ewes that are lambing for the first time or that first time uh, lamber is probably going to have some lower birth weights. Ewes that are in better body or good body condition score usually have the right size lamb. So that's important. 
to monitor body condition score. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in just a minute. Lamb and kid viability. Again, triplets, it's lowest and just because it, the birthing process probably takes some time to get done with three. Ewes that are in good body condition score have lambs that are more viable. Uh, again, go back. We said heavier and, and lighter lambs are more prone to dying and they're more prone to being your least viable lambs. If you don't have a lamb that's very active, they're going to be the ones that are going to be, have problems with that heat loss because they're not getting up. They're not shaking. They're not getting up, moving and getting there and, and, and raising that body temperature. Starvation and exposure. Another reason we lose these newborns makes sense that singles have the least problem with that. Again, Lambs that are born in that, what we call that intermediate weight, I, you know, and as I said, a half to one kilogram above your average flock weight. Uh, those are lambs that are going to do, do well. Uh, low birth weight lambs, it probably is related to the, they have problems getting warmed up. They don't have that re energy reserve necessary, so they don't get up and find a, find a meal quickly enough. That's why they probably die uh, from exposure or starvation. Maternal behavior score is significantly associated with starvation. And there is a scale for this. And I'll just briefly say this. You want a high score on this. And uh, the extreme low score is you got a you and she's lambing and she sees you from across the pasture and gets up and runs off. That's a very poor, you know, low score. We don't want that. High scores, the highest score would be you walk right up there and you can sit there and tag those lamb and she stays right there with those lamb and is concerned about them. That's if, if you, that's the you that you want. Those that are the other is what you don't want. And we know that those that have those low scores, we see a significant association with starvation. They're not taking care of their babies is the basic problem you see with them. Barry, we got another question here. What, what's a good target weight, target birth weight for kids? <laughs> They're going to say it's like five and a half to six kilograms somewhere in there would be what some use would be kids. I don't know that I've seen one again. They will say a half to one kilogram above your average is what they would say would be the best way. So it requires some work on your part to weigh them <laughs> all the, you know, weigh and have an idea of what would be a target weight for you. And it's going to be different with different breeds and different herds, et cetera. That's why I think they like to say that half to one kilogram above your average weight because of the differences. But you're thinking eight to 10 pounds is what, you know, they're probably shooting at eight to, you know, anywhere between there, eight to 12 pounds in the sheep. And I imagine it's pretty similar in the goats too. Uh, again, it's going to be different though, obviously between um, a boar goat and a, a new, you know, uh, a new bin or something like that, a milk goat, right? You're going to have a difference there and we have to account for that. So it's a hard question for me to be very specific at, with, to be honest, though. Survival to day three, it's again, lowest for triplets and it's lowest for your oldest ewes that have babies. Uh, and again, they're saying here, highest for those lambs that's got a one kilogram above the average weight in your flock. Uh, again, survive till day three, maternity, maternal behavioral score. If those ewes that are good mothers, it's a good deal. Those that aren't, you got issues. So how could we improve this? Um, you know, one, we need to reduce the stosia. We know proper nutrition is associated with decrease in lamb mortality. Three to three and a half on a body condition score is what we'd like to see. Those use, they're going to have an easier time of lambing and those lambs are going to be at a better body weight when, they, when they're born. So that's why we want, make sure nutrition wise, you keep those use at three, three and a half, um, especially the last half of pregnancy, you sure want them there final six weeks, increase in birth weights, increase survivability. Now I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. You can get them too big. And that's why you got to watch your body. Because if you got big fat ewes are in those four to 
four and a half body, you're going to have trouble there too. So there is, you have to keep that in mind, but still as a whole, you know, the larger lambs are going to be, you know, better as long as they're not huge ones. And we've already talked about maternal behavioral score. It has, a, it, it, if, if you got ewes, they're not crazy. You're going to do a better job reducing that dystocia in a low stress environment. If you stress these ewes and does during preg, when they're trying to lamb and kid, they'll just stop and you got issues there. So we try to keep that stress to a minimum during the uh, birthing process. Bonding, you've got to have those babies bond with their mothers and that mother with the baby uh, those first few hours after they're born. They need to groom that animal, get to know the smell of, of the baby. The baby's got to get to know the smell of the ewe or the doe. That's all important. We know in this one study, uh, if they were allowed to remain at the birth site for six hours, they saw a significant improvement in the bonding, at least in the sheep. Colostrum, if your if you're, if you're used does are in a good body consistency score, that three, three and a half, they're going to have good colostrum. You can improve that colostrum. There's even studies that show, even if you just increase energy and protein during that last week before that you know for that baby's born you'll see an improvement in the colostrum so it's really important nutrition wise that we take care of these using does especially those last six six weeks and especially that last week if you want good colostrum and we know as I said before second leading cause of death in these lambs was not getting colostrum so you got good colostrum you're going to see an improvement in your uh, lamb survival facility in space you know, this study, Lynch, what he did was he had a paddock with no shelter, a paddock with shelter, found that 50% difference in death rates as far as that goes the, between the, the two paddocks. Uh, there was another study done not that long ago in England in which they had two very similar paddocks as far as, you know, forage, et cetera. One had one shelter. The other one, they added additional shelters. They all had the same one shelter, but they had additional and they saw a lot fewer problems uh, with the one that had the most shelters compared to the other one. So shelter is important. I mean, it protects them from that wind and rain and cold. Uh, and if you want to increase survivabilities in these animals, having a good place for those lambs and kids to be born is going to make a big difference. You know, I get into this, I just call it lambing, kidding, uh, time management. You know, and if you've ever been to our meat goat, boot camp you know we kind of go through this uh, a good herd health program to make sure we don't have any disease issues you know take it from me who has sat and wondered why a lamb died and then i throw that you over and can't get any milk out of the teats because they're you know they're scarred or there's something wrong you know make sure those teats uh there's milk flowing don't let a you or a doe struggle to lamb or kid for several hours. I kind of follow the pattern of what we do with cattle, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. If they're straining for 30 minutes and nothing's happening, kind of probably need to figure out what's going on. I sure wouldn't want them to go much more than an hour if they're really trying to have the baby. We need to figure out what's going on if they're working that hard and nothing's happening. Dip that navel. Uh, there's, there's studies that show that it, that reduces disease. You know, we want that, you know, that baby, we want it to attempt to stand and nurse within 30 minutes. And we sure want it to be nursing by two hours. If that's not happening, we need to intervene and get some uh, colostrum from mom and go ahead and tube those babies to get them started. Uh, and, you know, might even want to check their temperature and see if it's if it's uh, normal or if it's below normal. We probably need to do something about getting some heat on those babies and getting them warmed up. So. Just be sure you're on top of that as far as your management is going. Now, just in conclusion, um, I think I've hit on that maternal behavior score. You know, select a breed and maybe even a line in that breed or your own that is best adapted for your conditions. You know, the mothers that show the, the best mothering ability, try to keep the, you know, the you uh, lambs or 
or kid lambs out. I mean, kids out of those, you know, you want to keep those uh, doe kids for them. Nutrition plays such an important role in the health of these ewes and the health of these babies. You've got to stay on top of your nutrition and feed these babies, these, these ewes and does correctly if we want to have uh, reduce our death rates. Don't forget about your space and your shelter because the environment is pretty hard on these babies. And then just be sure you pay attention. Take you know proper management uh, during this uh, kidding and lambing time so that you're uh, you're just you're just crossing your T's and dotting your I's so to speak just taking care of a business and uh, you'll have a lot more success at, at keeping these uh, babies alive I just ask for any questions I hope you don't get into that situation where you, you're feeding a bunch of babies this year 